Heavenly Father, as I offer these words this morning, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I do not know what the followers of Jesus, the women at the tomb, the disciples, two on the road to Emmaus, eleven gathered in the upper room, those fishing by the seaside thought was going to happen. Yet I do not think that they expected resurrection. I do believe they doubted that God could do a new thing. I don't suppose they could believe their eyes. And while they knew God had raised the widow of Zarephath's son, the son of the Shunammite woman, the man from Israel raised out of Elisha's uh, tomb, the widow of Nain's son, Jairus' daughter, and even Lazarus, I suppose that they were surprised to see that Mary's son, Jesus, was resurrected. Resurrection from the dead happened, and it happens. By every account, though, they were surprised. Perhaps in these last days, we have been surprised to find God in our lives, uh, in our homes. Uh, Maybe we've been surprised, too, that God can do a new thing in our time into a a COVID coronavirus isolation, the Lenten lessons have disrupted us. They came to us and they taught us and they surprised us. Like a woman at the well, we discovered that living water flows through new technologies and old forms of worship. We lived literally through a time and continue to live through a time when we do not worship God on the mountaintop or in the temple. Or like the man born blind, we see again God's presence in the world and in our households, amidst our family. We can hear God speak to us when we are alone for the stillness of it all. And now, now in touch with the struggle of shut-ins and those who cannot get to worship most Sundays due to work or health, we as a church have awoken to new causes new ways of gathering, and new ways of ministering. Old ways, too, like the phone tree. Who can believe that came back? We come to understand that church is for all people, not just those who can make it in person, all of which are thoughts and manners and work that we should carry with us out of isolation when the time comes. And, surprisingly, after a few short weeks, Like Lazarus, our desire for the Eucharist has been resurrected. The freedom to kneel at a rail and offer God our burdens and receive a small portion of bread as a sign of God's profound grace we no longer take for granted. And our longing to be together has been resurrected too and the relationships with one another, it has renewed a beating heart in the church. Today, we discover again, and perhaps we are surprised by the power of the living word, that Christ is resurrected. It is indeed Easter Sunday. It is Easter wherever you find yourself. We've given up cup and bread as a fast for the world to do our part in healing a a virus-stricken planet. Uh, It is a cruciform act. But from that sacrifice, we have a new experience of Easter. The church in exile from its buildings in order to save thousands of lives has taken up worship of the risen Christ from our homes amongst the virtually gathered out of the veracity, out of truth in our austerity. And so it is on this day that we have gathered, I imagine, in all manner of dress huddled around screens, and yet singing Easter hymns and proclaiming the resurrection of Christ. Easter comes. 
It always has. It comes even if emperors of old said it could not. It comes as persecution kept Christians huddled in catacombs. It comes in the midst of plague. It has come in famines. It comes when mighty armies battle in the fields and families huddle in basements. It comes to a worker in a gulag in Murmansk as it has come to a hostage in solitary imprisonment for 1,700 days. It comes. Easter comes. It cannot be stopped. Because, because resurrection a long time ago on that first Easter Sunday, like a seed laid in the ground for three days and spread its mighty roots into the deep, dark earth and brought forth life from death. Nothing can stop Easter from coming. Perhaps, perhaps Easter celebrated this way is a puzzle to those who think Easter is about them or what they want or their routines, the context of their story, especially those outside of our tradition or maybe inside for that matter, who believe that Easter is about going to church and Easter lilies, hats, and eggs. It's a puzzle to those who believe it is a mere ritual of what well, one might call epic altar guild proportions. Easter comes while we are at home, while we are at work. It comes with or without egg hunts and deviled eggs. It comes without peeps. It comes without bonnets and new suits. It comes if we are at home alone or if we have a few loved ones gathered near. It is a surprise perhaps to us, a realization an inflection point in which we see clearly God has not been invited into our story. No. On Easter, we are invited into God's story. We join faith ancestors going back 6,000 years who proclaimed wherever they have been that God is present, that God frees the enslaved, that God feeds those in the wilderness with manna, that God heals the sick, that God gives sight to the blind, that God raises the dead forever and evermore. In deserts, on roads, in homes, by the sea, at sea, and in tombs, you and I have inherited a new experience the very real understanding that one cannot hold back a God who resurrects. God tramples down death in all its forms, in every time, in every place. We see the life, the ministry, the death and resurrection of Christ as a whole, as a Otto Basileia, if you will, a word coined by the ancient Christian theologian Origen. That is that we see Christ, if you will, as an imprimatur, the best vision of the church. That is the kingdom of God in one person. So just as Christ is resurrected, so is the church. Today, you and I, we are regiven in Isaiah the prophet's words, tongues of teachers to sustain the weary with a word. We've been given a good word, a vision of the kingdom of God and the resurrected person of Christ, a vision of the church manifest to the world and in the world for the world. For if Easter comes on this day for us in our homes, to the family, to the couple, to the individual, the widow, the widower, it comes to us as we say the prayers around our tables and around our screens, then just assuredly does Easter come for everybody else. We have a good word for the weary world, for the sick, for those who seek to heal, to those who care, to those who sit with the dying. A good word to the fearful and the anxious. Even in a time of pandemic, of physical isolation from one another, even in this time of the coronavirus, God tramples down death. The good news of Easter and resurrection comes then to us 
and to those in China and Italy. It comes to those in New York. It comes to those in New Jersey and Michigan and California. It comes as our priests pray for the dying via FaceTime and Skype and telephone. It comes to the families who have lost loved ones due to this virus, clergy families and parishioners alike. It comes by the graveside with only a few gathered because of the CDC guidelines. It comes to the doctors and the nurses and the COVID teens that we have prayed with and prayed for. It comes even to us, wherever we may be right now. Easter comes. Resurrection comes. And by now, though it should not be a surprise, sometimes it still is. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.